Welcome everybody, my name is Lee McCormack. I'm from Lee Likes Bikes. So in this video, we're not gonna go into too much detail about the intricacies of how we do drops, but we're gonna show you four ways of handling drops that, that will cover all drops. We'll start with the simplest, most uh, usable, and we'll go to the least simple, most dangerous, least common technique. Um, for our definition, a drop is a situation where you go from a flat takeoff and there's a mandatory loss of elevation. It could be a ledge, it could be a root, a rock, a wooden bridge, anything to some sort of a landing. Here's way one to ride drops. Most of the time we can just roll them. You don't have to catch air. In, in general, our rules are we stay balanced in the middle of the bike on your feet, generally in a hinge. And if the bike's gonna make an angle, we make the angle. We don't allow the angle to happen to us. So here's a, a, a ledge. This can be written all kinds of ways, and we're going to do all the ways, trust me, right? To start, we're just going to roll down it. If the ledge is less tall than your arm is long, that means if you hinge down to the bar, you can roll it. And this is well within your range. I'm just going to hold it. I'm going to hold the brakes. And I want you to get on your feet and hinge, okay? Low hinge. So, like, this is not a crazy steep drop at all. So, by the way, like, this is not a very big drop, but it's using almost all your arm range, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, if it was bigger, would you want to be higher and more afraid or lower and more awesome? Lower, for yeah, sure. Exactly. So, we don't know how much range we need till we need it. So, just get low, man. Yeah. Right? Her belly buns ran on top of the bottom bracket. The bike has rotated forward. She's pushed her arms forward. This is the position you need to be in. And you got this on. You have this on lockdown. So we all have situations when we ride when you just come in and all you see is a precipice and then nothing. You know the world's going to drop away. So get low. If you're low, you can roll, you can send, you can stop, and God forbid, you can just jump off your bike. It gives you all the options. If you come in high, the only option is basically falling, pretty much. This is drops 101. I'm in a low hinge, weightless hands. I see that it's rollable and I just push. That's it. So the skill of being able to get low and roll down a ledge is critical. That will serve you in most places very, very effectively. That's technique one. Now we'll move on to technique two. So now let's say either it's so tall you can't roll it, right? And again, that would be tall and your arm is long, basically, or you're going fast. Now we're gonna send it. So now we're gonna go faster, you know the drop. It's got a great landing, we'll go faster. And then it's the same idea, except, okay, when you're going, when the bike's going slow, the angle changes fast. So it's a big angle change, boom. You push very fast and a lot. As we go faster, the trajectory is flatter. So there's less push and it takes place over more time. So it's less of a fast push. Most people, when they come to these things, are gonna it, subconsciously push your head up and away from danger. And that leads to going over the handlebars. So it's essential that we can approach these things in a good hinge and with weightless hands. Whenever you come to the threshold obstacle that you find interesting, come in and check your hands like this. This is so cool because A, you're balanced and B, you're not terrified. If, you, if you're coming into a thing and you cannot release your grip, your lizard has taken over your body and you're in danger. So don't do the thing. Fair enough? Let's send it. Nice job on, on style two. So style two is good at speed. I did the math one day, right around eight and a half miles an hour is the minimum speed for that technique. Like when you're going slower than that, the front end starts to uh, drop fast, too fast, and it gets unsafe. So let's say for style two, let's go at least 10 miles an hour. Okay, so now we're going to get into style three. In style three, we're going to consciously hop off the end and add height. This is useful, I guess, for, for two big, big ways. One is uh, you're not going fast enough to send it. So if you're going, let's say, below eight and a half miles an hour or so, we'll pop it off of it. That way, the like you control how the bike releases, and in the air, you control the landing angle consciously instead of letting the bike just drop. That's one use for that. The other use that could be used at the same time is if is if you want to land somewhere specific, but there's not enough speed to get there. So you'll add height to, to, to add distance. A little bit slower on purpose. Yeah. I came in slow with the intention of landing in a specific hole 
I, I, I was in my position and I gave a pop and once I got up, I felt like I had a little bit of a stall and then I created the angle and the bike landed exactly where I wanted it to land. Another use for this would be, let's say I want to go really fast but not land in the corner and go off a cliff down there. One other use would be for me to pop from back here and hop over this thing and then land higher on the landing. Oh my goodness. Man, Nicole's crushing it. Those three ways will handle 99% of drops. You have your default low, slow roll. You have your default low, faster send. You have the pop, which is going to be you're going too slow to send. You want to get to a specific landing place or you're going really fast and you want to skip the whole darn thing. Style four is a wheelie drop. We'll see you in another episode later on and we'll dig into the details.